G'day guys, welcome to another Australian property market update where we bring the leading ideas and information from Australia's leading analysts and experts straight to you each month. Now, as always, we look at the monthly capital growth rates, we look at the annual capital growth rates, vacancy rates, lending rates, and everything else that matters when it comes to property investing. Now, this month we've noticed a whole lot of super, super positive stuff in the data. Let's crack into it. So to kick things off, let's have a look at the capital growth rates across Australia this month. It was a really nice look in May actually, with a lot of capital growth being experienced across all of the capital cities outside of Hobart. And uh, still leading the charge, we are seeing Perth, Brisbane and Adelaide being the front runners. And uh, sneaky little Darwin having a bit of a resurgence as well. And it's starting to move in a pretty positive direction. I think you'll start to hear people talk a little bit more about that market as the time goes by. Uh, but one thing that I realized in May was there was a huge increase in the monthly capital growth rate in Brisbane and Adelaide. Brisbane up 1.4%, which was the strongest monthly capital growth rate that we'd seen this year. So it's really heating up as the year goes by and uh, we'll see what things end up. But how are things looking on an annual basis? Yeah, so when we look at the annual numbers, basically every single capital city in Australia is now up for the last 12 months outside of Hobart. But when you look at the context, Hobart obviously went off its head pretty much doubling in the last 10 years. So it's normal now that, you know, tens of thousands of people aren't rushing down there to retire for that market to retrace and sort of normalize itself a little bit. So as you can see there, when we're looking at the annual growth rates, we're still talking about Perth, Brisbane and Adelaide absolutely balling out at the moment. But one of the interesting things that we talk about in other videos on YouTube and on our podcast is the correlation between markets with low vacancy rates and very strong short-term capital gains. So how are the vacancy rates sitting across Australia cities at the moment? You know, this is one area where we're not seeing much of a light at the end of the tunnel because vacancy rates are still chronically, chronically low across Australia. All markets below 2% at the moment, a bunch of markets below 1% with Brisbane, Darwin, Perth, Adelaide. So it is intense to find a rental property at the moment. And we are seeing rents rise quite sharply off the back of that as well. Um, who knows what's going to happen if there's going to be more supply coming to the markets. I know recently we talked to a town planner in Brisbane and she mentioned that a lot of the councils are reviewing their town plans and looking at modifying some things so that they can incentivize private investors to build more supply, but it's not going to happen short term. In terms of the auction clearance rates, which is a great pulse check on just how hot the market is or how quickly places are moving at the moment. As you can see there in the chart for the week ending May, the auction clearance rates have gone up significantly, especially since our last market update. Now, the reason for this is twofold. One, in our last market update, there was a whole bunch of public holidays around Australia. And as good Australians, we kind of sort of put our head in the sands every time <laughs> there's a holiday and enjoy ourselves. And the other reason, I believe positive sentiment sentiment is slowly coming back into the market. Now we got a really good report this month from Commonwealth Bank that was having a look at the Australian economy and what sort of happened is they believe that they've done enough with the interest rate rises over the last year and a half to flatline the economy. They believe if we continue to keep the rates this high then we're going to actually start sliding into a technical recession over the coming months. Um, which is really positive news, as strange as that is to say, for the simple reason that Commonwealth Bank is now expecting interest rates to come down as early as November again this year versus sort of June next year, which is what they've been forecasting for the last three to six months. Now, what that means for investors, because investors are always looking at the future and what's going on in the market, is that most likely sentiment's gonna to start to improve with the expectation that rates are coming down and some of that pressure is gonna come off the household. So super interesting to already see that translating into higher auction clearance rates and people feeling confident about the market again. You know, and even though some of those numbers are looking really good, we are still seeing the consumer confidence levels at the low 80s, which is still like at GFC levels. So, you know, people still aren't feeling that great about the economy at the moment, but 
from what we're experiencing with the clients that we're working with and the people that are reaching out to our business is people actually are a little bit more confident than they have been in previous months. So maybe we'll start to see this number increase. Now in terms of lending rates, which is something I like to keep my finger on the pulse on a monthly basis, it's interesting to see that the level of investors are coming back into the market at the moment. Now what I've been noticing in the last two or three months in our business is the type of investor that's been reaching out is a little bit different at the moment. And I've seen this multiple times over the last nine or 10 years through this business. Each time the market is about to recover, a lot of business people and very, very high net worth individuals start reaching out. And generally they see the turn in the market a little bit earlier than most of the average Australians because they're not consuming the normal media. They're consuming updates like this, the same as you guys. And so they're a little bit of ahead of the curve in terms of their updates. You know, and in the month of May, there was no real change in those interest rates. Um, they kind of sat flat for the variable and fixed costs. Um, but one of our, our colleagues, Hayden, you know, he approached his bank recently and, you know, just sort of threatened to leave them and unless they gave him a little bit of an interest rate reduction and they were more than willing to. So, you know, those changes are occurring if you're willing to sort of play that game. Now, the next one that we love to look at is listings, total number of listings, distress listings as well. Um, and a little bit of change here over the month, which is what we expected. Obviously in April with all of those public holidays, we saw listings drop a little bit, uh, but they have picked back up about 5.5% over the month, which is great to see some more listings finally. I know it helps us as a business, absolutely. Um, but the cool thing is distress listings have dropped month on month by 2.5%, but dropped annually by 8.5%. So comparing it to May 2023, distress listings have dropped by 8.5% on a national basis. So really good to see those numbers. What I think is interesting is the disconnect between, and I've been talking about this for months now, the mainstream media and what's really going on in the market. So if we look at the mortgage rate cliff, which was almost the key piece of media that everybody talked about for 18 months leading up until about what January this year that never eventuated because there's a key difference between what sells newspapers which is fear and the reality of people like me, Simon and you guys sitting at home and knowing that something's coming up like if you're on a fixed interest rate and it was going variable six to nine months in advance then you've got the opportunity to plan for that. So I think that's really important as we move forward because what I predict over the next couple of years is the media is gonna to continue to be turbulent. There's always gonna be something coming up that's really exciting, something coming up that's really scary. When we look at the numbers, an 8.5% reduction in distress listings when they were supposed to be up by like 300% by mm, now on mm. last year. So it's really important. That's why we decided to start these updates again so that you're getting the actual truth in the data versus the noise in the mass media at the moment. So another month has gone by and the numbers look incredible from our perspective as investors. So we'll continue bringing these monthly market updates. But before we finish up, let's jump into our gold nugget of the month. So about five or six years ago, I think you stumbled across that incredible article from Homely, which was looking at the data in Sydney, Melbourne, Brisbane, and Perth between 1970 and 2016, which was about a 46 year period now. Good math there, bro. What was super, super interesting, <laughs> and I think the title of the article was 46 years of data as well. <laughs> so I didn't even have to work it out. I love it, I love it. <laughs> But basically this article was super interesting to Simon and I, not just for overlaying long-term real estate cycles and the booms and busts of different markets at different times. You fully throw me off. <laughs> <laughs> but um, it, was, it was interesting to me because what I was able to do was look at the total return of Sydney versus Melbourne versus Brisbane versus Perth and divide it by the number of years and get an average annual growth rate. Now, everybody in Sydney that grew up there, myself included, now I live in Brisbane, or Melbourne has a monster Sydney, Melbourne bias. And then it's like, well, if I can't afford there, then maybe I'll look at Brisbane. And then every now and then, Perth, Adelaide, Canberra, you know, Darwin go through their little dash and it's like the moth to the flame and everybody goes there because that's where the easy money is. And that's what's happening in Adelaide at the moment. That's what's happening in Perth at the moment. But what is interesting about the long-term data, when I looked at the total return divided by the number of years, Brisbane was the number one market in that period of time. So it did an average of 9.7% per annum. 
followed by Sydney and Melbourne that were close to that. And then Perth was actually quite a distant fourth. So that had only done 8.2% over that period of time. Now, why that's so important to me and you as investors is I know Perth is cranking at the moment. I know Adelaide's cranking at the moment. And obviously they have a very good long-term history of performance. They're beautiful, diversified cities that are increasing in population. But what they don't have is the proximity to Sydney and Melbourne. And what they don't have is a future where 25% of Australia's population growth is gonna go into Sydney, 25% into Melbourne, and 25% into Southeast Queensland or Brisbane. So that is why even though Perth is cranking right now and Adelaide's doing quite well as well, you continue to hear us in other videos talk about Brizzy, especially with the Olympic Games coming up and knowing what happened in Sydney during that period between 97 and 2003 where prices almost doubled. Now to wrap up today's video, there was some really positive news that we received recently that the heavy rail from Brisbane to the Sunshine Coast got approved and they are going to break soil and they expect to have that completed before the Olympic Games. So for us guys that live up here on the Sunshine Coast, this is amazing news. It will actually cut the commute time to Brisbane by about 45 minutes. So it'll make Sunshine Coast feel a lot more connected to the Brisbane market which will allow the Sunshine Coast population to continue booming. You know, this project is expected to be over $5 billion. And if you're anything like us and you sort of geek out on the data, then if you start to look at places in Australia where heavy rail, major highways, major hospitals, major universities have gone in, it has a positive effect for four reasons on the local area. One, speculation. Two speculation, three, no, <laughs> uh, one speculation, obviously population growth, job growth and income growth. Now that is a wrap for this month's property market update. Thank you so much for allowing us the opportunity to share this information and to share this data with you so that you can make a better investment decision. Now, for those of you who are thinking about purchasing an investment property in Queensland over the next three to six months to capitalize on what is to come, then we would love to offer you a free strategy session. You can head over to our website, www.pumpedonproperty.com, follow the free strategy session links and book in a call with either myself, Simon, or my brother, Ben, where we'll talk about where you're at right now, where you would like to be in the future. We can educate you on the market and help you put the right plan in place. You can take that information and go and smash it yourself or become one of the very few clients that we work with each month. At the end of the day, guys, we just want you to make an educated investment decision. So thank you so much for tuning in. Until next month, enjoy. The stim... <laughs> really <laughs> struggling with this one, eh? Hey? Have just a five minute bloopers reel just from this one market update. <laughs> yeah. I, had to, I didn't like it. I didn't nah, like it. I don't, I don't like either. it. All the rest of the reg... during what's really going in in the month. Out of out of the videos to another update with Ben. Fuck, I don't know how to say this. <laughs> Are you alright now? Yeah, I'll do it now. <laughs> Sometimes it's just good to have that. Yeah.